everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today we continue doing SAM 2 revision in chapter 7. As a reminder, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification such that you won't miss any video in future. As usual, before we start, let's keep in mind that if fx is continuous at x equals n, then left hand limit of fx is equal to right hand limit of fx as x approaches n and also equal to fn. If the limit of fx exists as x approaches n, then left hand limit of fx is equal to right hand limit of fx as x approaches n. Now let's try this question. In this question, you are given the function fx and given that m and n are constants. Now for question A, find the value of n given that the limit of fx exists as x approach 1. Since you are given that the limit of fx exists when x approaches 1. So first thing is we need to write down the formula that can be used that is left hand limit it is equal to right hand limit. Then we try to select the correct function for the left hand limit. So left hand limit means the region is less than 1. So the, for x less than 1, the function is x power 2 minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Then right hand limit means x is greater than 1. So that is modulus 1 minus x divided by x minus 1 plus n. So, next, to continue the calculation, so next one is you need to take away the modulus sign here. Now, how to take away the modulus sign? We look at some theory first. Now, since we know that modulus x can be positive x when x greater than 0 and also can be negative x when x it is less than 0. Now same thing as modulus of 1 minus x, it can be positive 1 minus x when 1 minus x is greater than 0 and also can be negative 1 minus x when 1 minus x is less than 0. Now we simplify this inequality. So we find that when x is less than 1, it is positive 1 minus x. And when x is greater than 1, it is negative 1 minus x. Since in the question, the modulus is under the region x greater than 1, so means once we take away the sign of modulus, it should be replaced with the negative 1 minus x. So now we have, actually we can use other methods also. Now we try to compare the value of 1 minus x under modulus and without modulus. Now we test for the region x greater than 1. So the region x greater than 1, let's we simply choose a value of x. Let's say we choose x equals 2. We try to substitute x equals 2 into 1 minus x of the modulus and we find that the value is equal to positive 1. Now, without modulus, we substitute x 
with 2, we find that the answer is negative 1. So we can see that the different, it is different value. So now, in order to produce the positive value, so that it becomes the same value as modulus, so we can simply put a negative in front here. So means when negative, negative, so the answer becomes positive. So means we need to put in the negative in order to produce the same answer as modulus if we take away the sign of uh, modulus. So another case, in case, we just say in case, in case we test the other side, in case x is less than 1, in case x is less than 1, so let's say we simply choose a value of x which is uh, less than 1, so let's say we choose x equals to 0. And we simply sub into the 1 minus x under modulus, we find that it is positive 1. And without modulus, it is also positive 1. So in this case, we find that the value is the same. So if the value is the same, means we do not have to add in the negative in front of 1 minus x. So from here, we can make conclusion that for the region x greater than 1, uh, the modulus of 1 minus x can be replaced with negative 1 minus x. As for the region x less than 1, the modulus of 1 minus x can be replaced with positive 1 minus x. Now we go back to the question. For left hand limit, first we try to factorize x power 2 minus 1 becomes x minus 1 x plus 1. Then for modulus, we have seen just now that after taken away the modulus sign, it should be replaced with negative 1 minus x in order to calculate the value of limit. So next, we can see that x minus 1 can be cancelled off here, becomes x plus 1. As for this one, before we can cancel off the x minus 1, we need to expand the negative becomes x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 plus n. Then, after that we can see that x minus 1 and x minus 1 can be cancelled off. So, after cancel off x minus 1, it becomes 1 plus n. So now, we try to substitute x with 1 into the limit. Then, after simplify, then now we can get the answer n is equal to 1. Now, we go to question b. If f is continuous at x equals 1, determine the values of m. Since f is continuous at x equals 1, so first we write down the equation which is left hand limit equals right hand limit of function fx as x approaches 1 and equal to f1. So, from the equation, we can see that there are three values. So, in order to calculate values of m, 
we need to choose two to calculate the values of m so here i choose left hand limit and also f1 so first why i choose f1 because m is in f1 since we want to calculate m so we must choose f1 next i choose left hand limit why i don't choose right hand limit because right hand limit consists of the value of n where we are asked to calculate the value of n in question a in case the value of n that we calculate in question a is wrong so this one will give effects on the answer for question b2 so that's why i don't choose uh, right hand limit i choose left hand limit because left hand limit it is given in the question so to play safe so we better choose the function which is given so after that we just substitute the function of left hand limit which is x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1 equals f1 which is m2 minus 2 so now we do the factorization on x power 2 minus 1 it is x plus 1 x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 equals m squared minus 2 now x minus 1 and x minus 1 can be cancelled off becomes x plus 1 equals m squared minus 2 now we substitute x with 1 then after that we try to simplify in order to get the final answer where m is equal to plus and minus 2 thanks for watching